In this video today, I'm going to be showing you all how to emulate Windows 10 on UTM. And UTM is available for both M1 Macs and iOS devices due to them having similar CPU architecture. Both M1 Macs and iOS devices both run on a custom ARM architecture. So UTM is compatible across both of them. And UTM supports ARM emulation along with x86 and x64 emulation, which is pretty cool because most virtualization applications actually don't support 32-bit and 64-bit operating system emulation yet due to how new Apple Silicon still is. And UTM is based off of QEMU, which is basically a decade-old free open source software, which will allow you to run many different operating systems. And I personally haven't come across an operating system that UTM does not support yet. It's definitely one of the best emulators out there in my opinion, but there is one catch which I'm about to get to in a moment. And really the biggest downside to UTM currently is that it does not support 3D acceleration. So that means that it's going to struggle to run any 3D games really, or any 3D intensive applications such as video or photo editing. UTM is really just for very simple tasks at the moment. And if you're looking to do something heavy with like 3D editing or 3D gaming or whatever, then I would recommend going for Parallels, which is a paid option. And if you'd like automatic updates from UTM, you can download this off the Mac App Store for $15. But if you're fine with having non-automatic updates, and don't really feel like paying for the software, then you can go for their free version, which is offered on their website here. And I will have this website linked down below. It's just literally mac.getutm.app, and it should be the first link down below. And that's the intro there. Let's get started with the video. The first step is to locate the Windows 10 page under UTM's gallery, and the gallery can be entered by going to UTM's homepage, and then clicking gallery in the top right. Then scroll down on the gallery page and find Windows 10, click on that. On this page here, you'll see the specs of the Windows 10 Virtual Machine, a Downloads tab, the Instructions, along with a very important troubleshooting guide, which you will need to do in order to prevent Windows 10 system corruption. Scrolling back up to the top here, we can move on to Step 2, which will be downloading all the needed files. The first file being UTM for Mac. This is basically just UTM's application here, which will be available on a GitHub page. Just look for the latest version, which is currently version 2.1.1 and just scroll down and look for the utm.dmg download under the assets thing here. Click on that and while that downloads just click the back arrow to go back to the Windows 10 gallery page and look for the second download link. Next click Windows for ARM and this right here is basically our bootable VHDX file and this is what we use to install Windows 10 on the virtual machine and once you get to that page here you'll notice that you'll actually need to be a member of the Windows Insider program and it's a free to sign up and I'll be showing you how to do that. You simply just need to go up to the top right where you see sign in, click that. Sign in or create a Microsoft account if you don't already have one. Once you've signed in your Microsoft account, just simply click learn more on the Windows Insider preview page. Then click register. Sign in now and since we've already signed in, you'll just be redirected. Scroll down on the register for Windows Insider program page then read the important notice, and you might want to look at the terms of this agreement. Once you've done that, just click on the check mark right next to the I accept the terms, and then click register now. Once you're officially signed up, it should say welcome to the Windows Insider program. And what I recommend doing here is actually going back to the UTM gallery, which you can do by just clicking the back arrow a few times. Then click on Windows Farm once again. And you'll now have access to the Windows 10 on ARM Insider Preview download. Just scroll down on this page here and download the Windows 10 Client ARM 64 Insider Preview. And to download that, just click on this blue button here. And that file is going to be like 9 gigs, so it's going to take a little bit to download. So we can just let that download in the background and we can download our final file. So just go back to the Windows Gallery one last time. And you're just going to want to download the Spice Guest tools. And these are just basically drivers for the Windows Virtual Machine. And all you have to do to download them is just click the download link here. And once all these files are completed downloading, we can move on to step two. Okay, now that our files are all downloaded, we can move on to step two. Now, open up the location where all the files downloaded in Finder. For me, that's just my downloads folder. 
And the first file you're going to want to open is the utm.dmg file. Just double click on it to open it. Then click and drag UTM over in your applications folder. And it's about a gig, so it's going to take a moment. But once it's done copying, you can scroll down in your finder sidebar and then you can eject the UTM disk because it's no longer needed. And you can also delete the utm.dmg file if you would like. Next up, we're going to want to open up UTM. So just head to your applications folder where you just dragged UTM to and double click to open it. And then it's going to say UTM is an app download from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Just press open. And if you've installed it successfully, you should see a page like this suggesting to create a new virtual machine. You can browse the UTM gallery, the user guide or the support guide. And today we're going to be installing Windows 10. So we're going to want to create a new virtual machine. You're going to want to title your virtual machine something easy to find. So I'm just going to call it Windows 10. Then you're going to select the style as operating system. And if you want, you can change the icon by just clicking on this computer monitor here. And I'm just going to change it to a Windows 10 icon. Then head over to the system tab. On here, select the architecture as ARM64 and make the system QEMU 5.2. And if you have an 8 gig M1 Mac, you're going to want to give the virtual machine about 4 gigs. And if you have a 16 gig M1 Mac, you're going to want to give it about 8 gigs. You basically just divide your total system memory in half, and that's how much you'll give to your virtual machine. And in my machine, I only have 8 gigs, so I'm just going to give it 4 gigs of memory. And before we add any drives or anything, we're actually going to need to convert the BHDX file over to a QCOW2 file. And this is due to UTM not getting along very nice with VHDX files. And most, for most people, it actually just corrupts the whole system once you shut it down. So if you convert it over to QCOW2 file, you will not have any of these issues. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save your virtual machine in progress. So just click save. And we will add the QCOW2 image once it's converted over. So you can minimize UTM for now. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll down to the description or visit UTM's website and go to the Windows 10 gallery. And to troubleshoot this corruption, we're simply just gonna to need to convert the BHDX image over to a QCAD2 image. And to do that, you're simply just gonna to need to install Homebrew, which you can install with a simple command here on Homebrew's website. So just copy this, open up a terminal window using Spotlight, so just command space. Then copy paste this install Homebrew command right into terminal, press enter. And then press return to continue with the installation. And if it looks like it's stuck for a moment, don't worry. It's just loading all the files for you. Once it's completed, you will see a percent sign with the cursor mark after it. But there is one last step, which is adding Homebrew to your path. Simply just drag from echo all the way over to this last quotation mark and then do command C to copy. Then paste that after the percent mark. And if that command worked correctly, you'll now see another percent mark with a typing symbol after it showing that it worked. Next, we're going to want to install the QEMU conversion software. So simply just type in brew install QEMU, then press enter. And since I've already installed QEMU, it's going to say that it's already installed and up to date. But for most of you guys, it's going to run through a quick process. And once it's done, you'll see this percent mark again once it's completed installing. We're now going to want to cd to the downloads folder or wherever you downloaded it to. And what cd does is it basically places the terminal window inside of that folder, allowing you just to run files off of their names rather than their paths. So since I've downloaded everything to the downloads folder, I'm just going to type cd and then you'll do this line, users, this, and then your username. And you'll simply just type the name of the folder that you downloaded them to. So if you did downloads, you'll just type downloads like this, then press enter. And you are now directly in the downloads folder. So instead of pasting the path of this file, you can simply just copy and paste the name in here. And that makes it a lot easier to deal with these files because it won't be as confusing. And here's the conversion step, which is very important that you follow as I type it. And the command that UTM provided wasn't really working for me. So I did a little bit of research and I found another command that does the trick. And that command is QEMU slash IMG convert. And here's where we'll copy and paste the file name into the terminal window. So put a space after convert, go back to your downloads folder, and you're just going to want to not rename the file, but you'll right click on it. So control click, then press rename, 
and you're just going to want to copy this Windows 10 Insider Preview Client Arm ENUS a bunch of numbers .vhdx. So just Command C, and you're going to paste that in the terminal. Put a space after that, and once again, do Command V. And instead of pasting VHDX at the end of the second copy, you're just going to want to replace it with QCOW2. And now what this will do is the QEMU IMG will convert the VHDX file over to a QCOW2 file. Now just press Enter, and you will see that a QCOW2 file will now appear in your downloads folder or whatever folder you had the VHDX file in. And for some reason, when it converts the file over to QCAT2, it thinks that it's 70 gigabytes, but I'll show you in a moment that it's actually only nine gigs. And to view the actual size of the QCAT2 file, just do Command I, and you'll see that it's actually only taking up 9.6 gigabytes on the disk, and it's not taking up a mass of 70 gigs. I'm honestly not quite sure why it gets confused like that, but you really don't need to worry about it, and it's like I said, not actually 70 gigs. Now that we've successfully converted the VHDX file over to a QCOW2 file, we can actually close out of the terminal by just doing Command Q or pressing the X here. We can close out of Finder, and we now want to go back into UTM. Now we want to open up the virtual machine settings once again by going up to this edit menu in the top right of UTM. Go over to the drives, press import drive, and now we'll import our QCOW2 drive by pressing open. Then select the interface as NVMe. Next, you're gonna to wanna to press new drive, removable, and then select USB, and then press create. Then press save. And the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to add our Spice Guest Tools ISO file by scrolling down on this Windows 10 virtualization page, pressing on the CD DVD menu, then pressing browse. Then double click the Spice Guest Tools ISO file. And we can now boot up our Windows 10 virtual machine. And if you see a black screen like this, don't worry. It's just a little slower on the first boot, but it will eventually show back up and let you continue with the Windows 10 installation. Now we can run through the Windows 10 setup guide. And if your mouse doesn't appear at first, simply just go up to the top right and then click on this mouse, which will capture the mouse input inside of the virtual machine. And you now should be able to see it. Oh, and an important note on this is that Windows 10 uses this feature called ping, which will tell Windows if you're connected to the internet or not. And UTM is lacking that feature. So it's gonna think that you're not connected to Wi-Fi, but you actually are. And I'll show you that in a second. And we now have successfully booted into the Windows 10 virtual machine. Now the last step to this is installing the Spice Guest tools and adjusting our desktop resolution. And we can start with the Spice Guest tools. And we put those into our CD DVD drive. So we just need to open up the File Explorer by clicking on the Windows icon in the bottom left, clicking on File Explorer, scrolling down to the CD DVD drive, and then just double clicking on the Spice Guest tools, then press yes to allow the application to install. Next, I agree. Press finish, and now the drivers have been installed. And as I was talking about before, Windows does not detect that you're connected to the internet, and it'll say that there's action required, but when you open up something like Microsoft Edge, you can actually go to a website like google.com, and you'll see that the internet is working flawlessly. But besides that, the last step is just adjusting our desktop resolution, which can be done by right-clicking on the desktop, going to display settings, then scroll down on here and look for multiple displays, press show on only one, keep changes, and then select your Mac OS desktop resolution, which for me is 2560 by 1600. Then you just wanna press on keep changes, and you can now put that in a full screen. And if you want to take your mouse cursor out of the virtual machine, just click Control and Option at the same time. And you can now put your virtual machine into full screen. And to put your mouse back into the virtual machine, just press on that Capture Mouse Cursor button again. And your mouse will be back in the virtual machine. And the first time you put it into full screen, it might be a little zoomed in. And a simple way to fix this is by swiping to the left. So simply just put three fingers on the trackpad and swipe to the left, 
and then swipe back and you'll now see that the window has been resized and you've now successfully installed Windows 10 on your M1 Mac. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll work on getting back to you as soon as I can.